This short presentation will introduce you to the Synergy DE.NET Assembly API. When Synergex released Synergy DE 913, one of the many additional features was the Synergy.NET Assembly API. This new API, although relatively simple in nature, is extremely powerful and, and opens up a whole new world of possibilities for Synergy applications. In a nutshell, the API allows developers to load .NET assemblies directly from within their Synergy applications and then interact with the types, such as classes, that are contained within those assemblies. For example, an assembly might contain a class which is an ultra-modern UI form and the developer could load an instance of that form, display it on the screen, and allow the user to interact with the form. The developer can also programmatically access the various members of the form, such as fields, properties, and methods. It's even possible to bind Synergy methods to events that may be raised during the processing of a .NET class. Because this API directly manipulates .NET assemblies, it's available only on the Windows platform. So what types of .NET classes could a Synergy developer use? Well, any type of class. The .NET framework itself includes a class library of literally thousands of classes, and the .NET Assembly API allows any of these classes to be used from within Synergy applications. Some of these classes are graphical in nature, for example, a complex chart control or a report viewer, whilst others are non-graphical, for example, an FTP client or a validating XML parser. Developers might also choose to use classes from third-party vendors. There are many excellent component marketplace websites where developers sell reusable software components. Perhaps the most common model, however, will be building custom .NET classes using Visual Studio. For example, a developer might use Visual Studio to create a .NET assembly containing a collection of Windows or WPF forms. In building these forms, they may choose to take advantage of the wealth of advanced user interface components available from vendors such as DevExpress, Infragistix, and many others. With only a little practice, it's easy to create stunning UI experiences for the users of your applications. What can be achieved is limited only by your imagination. Although the .NET Assembly API is not limited to manipulating visible .NET components, this is perhaps the most common use case. With only a small learning curve, it's possible to implement ultra-modern user interfaces within existing or new Synergy applications. The .NET Assembly API fully supports developing and processing user interface components built with the traditional Windows form env Forms environment and also fully supports the emerging Windows Presentation Foundation environment, more commonly known as WPF. As mentioned earlier, the .NET Assembly API also supports manipulating non-visible components, with email or FTP clients being just a couple of examples from the hundreds of use cases that could apply to many applications. The Synergy .NET Assembly API is fully usable in any Synergy application on the Windows platform, even applications which have a totally cell-based user interface today. If an application does already use UI Toolkit, however, there is also specific new support for the .NET Assembly API in the UI Toolkit. With just a few lines of code, forms can be embedded within UI Toolkit windows, tab sets, and composite container windows. There is also a mechanism to process such .NET forms in the same way that other UI Toolkit windows are processed, with full support for UI Toolkit menu processing. Perhaps one of the biggest advantages of the .NET Assembly API is that it can be introduced into applications incrementally. Developers could, for example, enhance the user interface of an existing application on a screen-by-screen -screen basis. There are two main ways that the .NET Assembly API can be used. The first method is for a developer to directly manipulate the classes which make up the API. At the lowest level, the API consists of four new classes in the Synergy runtime. These classes are called .NET Assembly, which represents an actual .NET Assembly, .NET Object, which is used to represent any .NET Object, .NET Delegate, which allows developers to hook up Synergy methods to be processed in response to .NET Events, and finally .NET Exception. 
This class is used to communicate information about any unhandled errors which may occur inside the .NET environment back to the hosting Synergy application. Manipulating these classes directly can be easy if your requirements are very simple. But as your use of the API becomes more extensive, this approach can quickly become very complex. Generally, Synergex doesn't recommend the direct manipulation of the .NET API classes. There is a much better way. That better way is to use a new utility called GenNet, which examines one or more .NET assemblies and then generates Synergy code, which contains classes which mirror the interfaces of the .NET classes encountered in those assemblies. Internally, these Synergy classes manipulate the .NET Assembly API. So, when an application uses one of these Synergy classes that GenNet has created, the underlying .NET classes are actually being used. Programming with the classes generated by GenNet is significantly easier than programming against the low-level .NET Assembly API, and there are some significant additional benefits. For example, developers can take full advantage of Workbench tagging, when using GenNet's wrapper classes. And perhaps the most important benefit is that the application code which is written to use GenNet's wrapper classes will be fully forward compatible with Synergy DE 4.NET. The .NET Assembly API will not be present in Synergy DE 4.NET. It doesn't need to be. Today, the .NET Assembly API provides a mechanism for Synergy code to be able to use .NET classes. But in Synergy DE for .NET, applications will inherently be able to use any .NET class directly. Because the Synergy classes that GenNet creates look exactly like the real underlying .NET classes, the code that uses those wrapper classes today will simply be able to use the real .NET classes in the future. Let's briefly take a look at an example of a Synergy application that's using the .NET Assembly API. Here we're looking at the login screen for a sample application called ChronoTrack. ChronoTrack is essentially a Synergy UI toolkit application, which has been uh, partially um, reworked to use the .NET Assembly API. One of the areas that's already been reworked is the login screen. So what we're looking at here is a Windows form. Let's go ahead and enter our password and click the OK button to log into the application. You'll see that we're making fairly heavy use of the .NET Assembly API from the get-go. Uh, parts of this application are standard UI toolkit. The menu processing is still UI toolkit menu processing. And the tab set that you see, this uh, initial entry point to the application loaded within uh, the launcher tab page there, is UI toolkit tab set processing. But the, right now, what we're seeing is that the, the form that we've got loaded within that tab page is actually a .NET Assembly API um, use of a uh, Windows form. The form on the left hand side is making use of some group box controls to allow us to navigate around the various parts of the application and to the right hand side we have a, uh, an internet web browser embedded within the, uh, the welcome page of the application as well. As I already mentioned parts of this application have already been migrated to the .NET Assembly API for the user interface and parts have not. So if we look in work in progress here, we'll see toolkit user maintenance, and you'll see that parts of this application are still um, pretty old, pretty traditional UI toolkit code. Uh, and the code behind all of this uh, ChronoTrack application is pretty much just a standard UI toolkit application with some modifications to allow us to process .NET forms instead of standard traditional UI toolkit forms. But you can still see there is still some UI toolkit within the application. Other parts of the application have already been migrated. So if I go and select maintenance and look at user maintenance, what we'll see here is the new version of the user maintenance screen that we just saw. And as you can see, we're making fairly heavy use of some third party controls. I believe these are part of the Dev Express suite of controls, um, one of the uses of the Dev Express grid control. And it gives us a completely different user inter interface experience. Using some of these advanced grid controls is not just about look and feel, it's also about the, the behavior and the functionality of the application and some of the things that the users can do. Because not only can we use this, um, this carousel grid to view the data, 
we are in full editing mode of course and we can make changes to the data at this point and the user can even customize the uh, the user experience that they have so for example if I go into the customization for this carousel grid um, I can see the default layout for the form here and I can start to make changes on a user by user basis so if I particularly don't need don't uh, want to see the mobile phone number for example then I can drag that field off the form and save my preferences and now when we return to the grid that field isn't going to be there and I can reorder things and reposition things and, and change the, uh, the, the behavior of the maintenance screen. ChronoTrack is still very much a work in progress and parts of the application as I've already mentioned we haven't migrated yet so if I select project manager for example this part of the application is standard UI toolkit list processing at this point in time. However, when I drill into pick a project and actually drill into that project, then the, uh, the maintenance function for the project behind the scenes there, again, is an example of something that has been migrated to the .NET Assembly API. So here you can see a fairly complex screen still within our UI toolkit tab set processing. So we can switch around the different programs that we have open within the application. But you can see we're making um, advanced use of some of the uh, ultra-modern UI controls that some of the third-party suites give us. The ability to do drill downs and in-grid editing and all of that kind of thing is just inherently part of this whole environment. So that was just a quick example of a Synergy application that's using the .NET Assembly API. If you would like to see an example of how to use the Synergy DE .NET Assembly API, please refer to the webication entitled Hosting a Windows Form in a Synergy Application.